If the Christian stops at the flesh of Jesus and only what he did in the flesh, they also will be obscured from the presence of God. And that's where most of the church is, worshiping the flesh of Jesus and not the finished work which occurred out of the flesh. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Look at verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself? Notice, he offered himself through the eternal Spirit. He had to offer himself through what the Spirit said. No, you missed what I just said. Because I'm going to show you something that most of you will get today. Some of you will get it on the way home. Some of you Wednesday will have to pull off the freeway. <laughs> because it will hit you and you'll start shouting. Are you still here? He had to offer himself through the eternal spirit. Even, even Jesus, Donna, had to offer himself through the Spirit of God to be accepted by God and to have his offering of himself acceptable to God. Why? Because on the cross, he becomes sin. Oh, my God. Olabasha. On the cross, he becomes sin. So he has to present himself through the eternal spirit. Now, here's the question. How do you present yourself through the spirit? By the Word. Because the Word is given by the Spirit of God. And Jesus said, my Word is Spirit, John 6, 63. And it is life. Jesus said, the words that I speak, Speak to you our spirit. Why? Because they came from the Holy Spirit. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it like you're trying to squeeze life into them, and say, don't you forget that. Tell them that will be crucially important in the next 20 minutes. Watch me here. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 1. Watch this. 
For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continue year by year make those who approach perfect or mature. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Watch it. For the worshipers once purified would have no more consciousness of sins. I want you to hear what he just said. He said, he said, he, he, he said, he, he said, if any of those sacrifices that were offered in the standing tabernacle in the third dimension, if any of them had actually dealt with sin forever, the worshipers, once purified, would have been conscious of the fact we don't need to do this again. Look at verse 3. But in those sacrifices, meaning the earthly ones, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Now here's what he said. Ah, but we'll keep it up. They would have no more conscience of sin. So here's what he's saying. The moment your conscience becomes aware that the work is finished, you'll stop making offerings for sin. I, I, y'all need to hear. He said, the moment your conscience becomes aware, you will stop making sacrifices for sin. You'll stop making deals with God. You'll stop telling him, I'll never do it again. You'll stop thinking that because of what you did last Tuesday, you're not acceptable to God this Sunday. The, the moment. Your conscience becomes aware. Now here's the problem. Only your offering will keep your conscience aware. Because he has already finished the work. So it's true whether you believe it or not. So your job and my job is to keep ourselves in the place where we believe it. And what I'm about to show you is the only way you can keep yourself in that place is by offering up the words that you hear in the third dimension. The only way you can keep your conscience there is to, is to make sure what you're offering up is what is being said in the most holy place, not in the second dimension, and not in the outer court. Are you here? Oh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love this in just a moment. Look at verse 11 of chapter 10. Every, and every priest stands ministering daily and offering, and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. He's talking about that, that, that tabernacle on earth. He said, they were standing daily, ministering sacrifices that could never take away sins. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sins, sat down at that time, at the right hand of God, from that time waiting, till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, Look, look at the words. By one offering, for by one offering, he has perfected or he has completed forever those who are being sanctified. Watch it. So he's finished his work. And you and I are being sanctified by his work. Now we are sanctified in the heavens. But we are being sanctified in the earth. There it's finished. Here, what is finished is only manifested by what you say. Amen. 
There it's finished. Here, what is finished there is only manifested by what you say. That's why the offering has to be specific. That's why there are ordinances as to what can be offered up. That's why. Because no other offering will get the result that he has purpose. Now here's, what I'm, here's, here's what I'm getting to because I'm running out of time. Just like he offered himself through the Spirit, you have to continually offer yourself through the Spirit. Not through your emotions, not through your experiences, not through how you feel, not through what it looks like. Oh, watch it. I'm almost there. Oh, I'm almost there. I'm excited. Hebrews 10, go down to 19. He says, now because this thing is finished, look at verse 19. Therefore, brethren, have boldness. Children, I need you to pay attention because we're in the spirit now. Therefore, because all this stuff is finished, because he has perfected forever by that sacrifice, those of us who are being sanctified, therefore, Brethren, have boldness to enter the holiest. That's that third dimension. Come on, put, put, put the picture of the tabernacle up again. Put it up again. Put it up again. Put it up again. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, have boldness. To enter in to the place that before only the high priest could go. Brethren, have boldness to enter in to the place that before the high priest can only go once a year. You can go in every day. Now watch. 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 He that has ears to hear, let him hear. What part of you has to enter? Your conscience. Because the rest of you is already in. has to enter your conscience because the rest of you is already in. You went in with him. I'm going to show it to you. But your conscience and your mind is keeping you outside. Most Christians are spiritually schizophrenic. Their spirits and bodies are positionally in the holiest of holies and their conscience is somewhere on the outside trying to get in. And this is why Jesus says, Wilt thou be made? Wow. Wow. Look at your neighbor and say, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to? Do you want your whole spirit, soul, and body to be together in the most holy place? Because if you get in there and stay in there, nothing shall be impossible to you.
Therefore, brethren, be bold. To enter the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus. You've already been brought in. You've already been perfected. But you've got to get your conscience in there and keep it in there. Therefore, brethren, having bold as you enter the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Hear what he said. You are to come in by a new way. Yeah. yeah. It's not the old way of trying to get something that earns you the right. By a new and living way. Watch this. That he has consecrated. Consecrate means to distinguish or separate from all others. In other words, he made a way, and if you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it his way. You can't do it your way. And so just not anything you say will be acceptable. Not just anything you do will be acceptable because he made the way. This is what Jesus meant when he said, I am. There it is. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it just like I did it. Watch. Oh, it, it's, it's clearly here. I mean, once you see it, you have to have somebody help you misunderstand it. But, but the problem is, you have to see it by revelation. And how can they believe on him whom they have not heard? Watch it. Watch this. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. So watch it. I, so the Hebrew writer just told us, that his flesh is the veil. That the veil that you see in the temple, in the most holy place, is his flesh. And just like in the natural temple, The veil was keeping people from the presence of God. If the Christian stops at the flesh of Jesus and only what he did in the flesh, they also will be obscured. From the presence of God. And that's where most of the church is. Worshipping the flesh. Of Jesus. And not the finished work. Which occurred. Out of the flesh. Oh. oh, oh. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Huh. Well, let, me, let me finish. He consecrated us through the veil that is his flesh. No, I can't. I can't. Okay. Okay. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Go to Matthew chapter 27. <laughs> Verse number 50. I'm going, ooh, I'm going all the way to 53. Put it all up. The veil is his flesh. What happened to Jesus on the cross? Uh -huh, they, they nailed him. Okay, Paul tells us in Colossians that nailing was the nailing of the old covenant. 
not just his body. But then they pierced his flesh, which is the veil. And on the cross, after they pierced him, and Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. One translation says, one writer says, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my So his spirit leaves his body and he commits his spirit into the hands of the Father. So the Father receives his spirit. Where is the Father? In the most holy place in the tabernacle, in the heavens. So the minute Jesus yields up his spirit, his spirit goes into the holiest of all. His body is on the cross. It has become sin. Are you still here? Are you still here? So what just happened? The veil was rent, and the Father, the Spirit of God, is released. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple, the earthly one, the moment his veil was pierced and his spirit left, this veil was rent from top to bottom. Look at this. The earth quaked. The rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep are y'all in the building? Were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. I believe David, Noah, Ezekiel, Abraham, I believe they saw some of them. Now what just happened? The way into the holiest of all was just made and all the saints who were unable to go directly into the presence of God because the work had not been finished were released. This is 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 19 through 21, 22, 23. You can read it when you get home. I don't have time to go there. Now watch this. Go to John. My God, I will never get done with this. Yes, I will. Thank you. Go to John chapter 4. Oh. Are you getting this? Go to John chapter 4 and verse 19. It is the reality that you and I have just heard by the Spirit that Jesus is speaking of when he speaks to this woman at the well in John chapter 4. <sighs> you remember the story Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman? He's on his way to Jerusalem. She's a Samaritan. 
He's a Jew. The Jews and Samaritans have nothing to do with each other. She's amazed that he speaks to her at all. And then when he starts reading her mail, by the Spirit, he says, she says, well, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And then she starts asking him questions. Watch this. Then the woman said to her, verse 19, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. What is Jesus saying? He's saying that while this earthly tabernacle was standing and there was a division about how to worship, what to worship, what kind of worship is acceptable. Jesus said, Woman, let me tell you something. Something is about to occur that is going to change the whole definition and order of worship. Taken from his powerful series, The Miracle of the New Bowl, Bishop McClendon delivers a cutting-edge teaching about changing our mental disposition to release the power of God in our lives. Our new creation reality isn't about restrictions, the do's and don'ts religion has taught us, but about the liberty we have in Christ Jesus. He blessed me in Christ, he chose me in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. So he put a holiness on me. He put it on me in Christ, he gave it to me as said, now walk in it. Don't earn it, walk in it. We have a legal right to prosperity and good health. This message will show you how to demand it. The Covenant, the Law, and Grace. Available now at the digital download store. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh Prophet, did it say nothing? So if what you're saying isn't coming from the Spirit, it is not profiting you. You are spending an hour in church singing songs that are getting you no results. If they are not coming out of what? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words, the words, the words, the words that I speak to you our spirit the words that i speak are spirit the 